Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today on automation with a, another challenge. I am going to try and build a kind of current modern day V8 supercar or Virgin Australia supercars as it's now called. Um, still don't like the name particularly. However, uh, someone posted a challenge me. It sounds like a really interesting idea. I've actually gone on the internet and found a pretty detailed list of specifications for the car. So I'm going to try and build it as close to specifications as I can. Hopefully I'm going to be able to get enough power out of the car and, and lap tires so might be a, a competitive thing, basically. So we're going to start with, well, the most suitable of body stars, which would be this 2009 uh, coupe. I believe there is a four-door version of this, which is uh, actually... Uh, yeah, I think the current gen uh, cars would all be based on, on four-door vehicles, so we will go for the four-door uh, bodies where we can. So, panel material. I imagine it would be fiberglass, probably? With this, it's not going to be sort of carbon fiber bodywork, because it's, well, I guess bits of it probably would be. It'd probably be sort of a combination. Some bits would be fiberglass, like bumpers and so on, that will ping off. They want them to be relatively cheap. We'll go fiberglass. Uh, we'll go fiberglass in, uh, in this one. Uh, chassis type... I would imagine, I would imagine there would be a monocoque, maybe some, it would probably be a, I don't know whether they'd have a carbon fibre tub essentially in the middle or quite what, I'm going to go for a carbon fibre tub in the middle then you'd have all of the roll cage and so on built around that and, and so on. I, that seems like a sensible enough idea for, <laughs> to me, so we're going to go for it. It is going to be a uh, front-engined longitudinal. I will eventually remember my longitudinal and transverse. Uh, and suspension-wise, again, I looked up this, it is double wishbone suspension at the front. Teams are free to, like, create their own double wishbone suspension and geometries and, and whatnot going on, but it's double wishbone suspension at the front. And at the rear, I believe, it is uh, some form you can have... It's a... Uh, mandated um, independent rear sort of suspension -y things. I don't quite know exactly what it is. We're going to go with multi-link. It is a, uh, the sportier option, or sportier in this game anyway, than, than double wishbone, and it seems to be like it would be correct. Uh, things like, I know the V8 supercars run with a transaxle, which is essentially a gearbox. I believe it's a gearbox in the rear axle. Stuff like that I can't put into this car, okay? <laughs> it's not a thing that we can do, but I'm doing the best that we can here. So, Engine-wise, we are going to be having a V8, naturally. We are going to be having a V8. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I would imagine it would have an aluminium block and probably an aluminium head. I don't think we'd be quite getting up to a magnesium block in the <laughs> in the cars. Now, the engines themselves are 5 litres. That is uh, the kind of maximum for it. My plan with this... Actually, I don't quite know why I'm bothering going so mad with the old... Uh, uh, what's it called? The old stroke. Because the re the reason why is that um, we have a rev limit on the engine. The rev limit as to what they can do. I will guess that we're probably then going to well, might as well dual overhead cam, five valves. We will have again another al we'll have an aluminium head on the vehicle. Now the crank. This is a race car. Let's not forget. This is a full on, full on race car. So we can go for you know we'll have forged forged internals and whatnot on this, lightweight, lightweight titanium conrods, we'll have forged pistons and so on, that's all easy enough. Now, in the rules that I found, the compression for the engines is fixed. Now, the V8 supercars run on, uh, what is it, like 85% ethanol fuel, essentially, which is again, not something I can do on this game, and I don't know how that affects things like compression and whatnot, but the compression for the engines is 10 to 1. That's that's what the rules say, so that is what we are going to be working with. Uh, it has also got to be a naturally aspirated engine, so can't have a turbocharger, it is fuel injected, and of course we will have direct injection per cylinder, it's a race car, we'll have a uh, race intake. Now, fuel-wise, we'll put this on uh, super, for now, probably be on ultra, but I'm going to be honest, with the compression thing that we are restricted to using, this is kind of be a little bit pointless, you'll see why in a minute, uh, RPM limit, 7,500. That's what we have to work with. We can't go more than that. And then on to the exhaust. So we will have a dual exhaust, we'll get a bypass valve in there, whack up the exhaust size, and 
don't actually know if they'd have. I would assume they wouldn't have catalytic converters or any form of silencing on them because yeah some some race series you will have to have catalytic converters sort of lower entry level ones because the cars have to be road legal they have to pass mot's as one of their um like requirements to get into the series and, and so on but va supercars or whatever it's called now uh, not one of those so engine at the moment pretty garbage um only 370 horsepower we are looking for about 640 640 650 horsepower is where we are going to be going so let's go and whack the cam profile all the way up now the slight downside to well with all of this of course i say, I say slight downside with, with all of this um we can't do more than seven and a half thousand rpm there is still kind of more power in it but that's the <laughs> That's the limit of what we are allowed to do. Let's whack up the uh, oh, whack up the fuel mixture. Maybe not quite that far. And then ignition timing. We can uh, yeah, we'll keep chucking that at it. So up to six hundred and twenty horsepower. Okay, it's not too bad. Uh, can we? Oh no, so we don't want to go any further back with that. Now, can we get any more out of this? Uh, if we go, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> fuel efficiency isn't going to be great. It's a race car, so that's that's allowed. I say that's allowed. It's to be expected. Can we do any? Oh, let's go. oh I think that's just the engine was knocking or something. We're running too yeah, running too rich. Uh, we are a little bit down on the old. We're a little bit down on the power front where I would like to be ideally with this one. I mean, 620 horsepower. It's there or thereabouts. It's not. Yeah, it's not terrible whatsoever. Um, now, I I think, unfortunately, like I can up the quality on these. Okay, we can up the quality here. Uh, we'll make the engine more expensive. We're not really worrying about cost on this. The problem is a lot... Oh, okay, that one there does make a big difference. I can say, the problem is with a lot of these, like, for example, upping the quality here with the pistons. Now, that will give me... Or allow me to rev the engine higher. Which is great when you're building a car... Uh, <laughs> I say, when you're building a car in whatever way you want, but when you're building it to a specific rule set, I can't rev this car higher than, than this amount, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's the uh, this bit, top end, essentially, that is going to make the biggest difference. Fuel system, we can actually whack that up as well. Now, it's going to make the engine expensive, of course. We're not worrying about that. Now, you see what I mean about the uh, <laughs> the octane value. I'm not sure really what I... what. So what I can do about that, I guess what we could potentially do here is, um, uh, let's go try and make a little bit smoother power band because we're going to be sort of stuck with uh, not much in the way of power sort of down here. Um, it's yeah, you, well, again, you're in a race car, you're not going to be necessarily, um, you're not going to be down here unless things are going wrong. Let's face it, or or on. Even on restarts, you probably won't because they'll be, you know, be wrong and stuff. Either way, uh, I'm not quite sure if I can smoothen off that power band particularly. Probably not with the sort of engine that we've got. Either way, in terms of our in terms of our performance, we have exceeded. Oh, actually, I wonder if we go quality on the old exhaust system. Uh, it can help a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, six six seven nine looks about what we're going to get. Four hundred eighty two. Torques would probably be one of the more powerful cars on the grid. Would probably be one of the more powerful cars on the grid. And now is the all important time. What would our V8 supercar sound like? Yeah, it is certainly uh, certainly not a bad sounding engine. Yeah, I like it. And now I'm not actually sure which I, me I meant to look before I started recording, but <laughs> but uh, obviously I forgot. I'm not sure whether it would be a 90 degree V8 or a 60 degree V8 that we would see in the in the cars and it doesn't actually make a damn difference to the uh, performance so let's just go and give it a quick sound test is this one this is the one we're using that much is for <laughs> sure Yeah, that sounds mean. I like it very much. I like it very much indeed. I'm liking this engine and interestingly 
as I, I've followed the specs so far pretty much you know, to the letter of what I could find, and we've come out pretty accurate. We've come out pretty damn close to the figures. It said for 645 approximate power from these engines, and with everything that we've got on it, we're pretty close. Compression the same, rev limit the same. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, to say the least. Now, body styles. So we have got uh, the... We kind of have the four-door... Ooh, do we want the... I say that the hatchback... Sorry, coupe, that's the two-door. We've got the four-door hatchback, or we've got the four-door sedan. Um, front bumper on the... Uh, ooh, the front bumper on the hatchback is quite weird. It's, like, got two... In done. I'm sure I like that. I think we'll go with the uh, well, the coupe does it as well. We'll go with the sedan then, <laughs> just just because it's a nicer front end on that one. Right now, I did um, oh I, I said I did off camera go and mess around, try and get a car, to, uh, try and get the colours to be the old Volvo. Say the old to get the colours to be a Volvo sort of racing blue. I think it needs to be a little bit brighter. Um, it's kind of actually a little bit too shiny. If we, oh, no. Nah. Saw a little bit too metallic, perhaps? I don't know. Trying to find, trying to get the, the, the Swedish racing blue colour to work in a game is so, I find it so difficult to get the right shade of blue for that. I, don't, I just can never quite get it to work. It'll do, though. It will, it will do in all of that. Right. On to placements of stuff for this car. Right, let's start off with a grill. Uh, there are, uh, as I found out last time, there are plenty of actually uh, new stuff around for you to play with. There are a few parts on, on mine that do say mod. I think pretty much all of the stuff that I've got is mods with stuff that's actually has now since officially been added to the game. So yeah, there's a lot more fixtures and so on uh, added to the cars. What do we want headlight wise? We can have, I mean, I think we tend to go for these. Should we go for sort of a little bit thinner uh, kind of headlights on this one? I'm going to place them... Ah, the problem is I can never get these ones here to sit quite how I want them to on the front of my... Uh, on the front of my cars. I'm not sure I like, I'm not sure I like those ones. Uh, we could go for some of these. Um, again, can I get them to sit... Okay, they sit okay up there, actually. Uh, we're going to try and not make a hideous car. That, that, the goal for me today is to try and not make a hideous car. And it is difficult. It is very, very difficult for me because it's tempting just to start doing silly stuff. I say not make a hideous car. It's, it's tempting just to get carried away with uh, <laughs> placings of uh, placings of stuff. Um, <laughs> And then when you start end up making like silly faces, you just carry on, just just keep going with making the making the silly faces. I might stick with. I quite like this grill. I might just stick with a decent size sort of grill at the bottom. And then if we have, and I'm gonna stick with one of these actually. If we have maybe uh, one of no, let's not go for one of them actually. Uh, let's just go for a straightforward, slightly small, a slightly thinner kind of. Uh, grill along the top bit up there like so yeah okay that works at the front of the car now one thing the v8 supercars do have fairly sure they <laughs> so i say i'm fairly sure they have side exit exhausts and i was having a look through all of these bits and pieces and i think i can probably find a way to make my own kind of like little side exit exhaust so if we get these like little vents like these little panels down here uh make them a decent size down there and then i'm really hoping the game's gonna let me do this uh can we oh it will it will let us have proper side exit exhausts <laughs> i like it i like it very much i'm not sure that those are perfectly level side exit exhausts in fact i don't yeah i'm just don't worry about the symmetry on there yes we've got some side exit exhausts i'm happy <laughs> i was i was expecting the game to be okay with me doing that because it's generally fairly um, I say leaning it. It's generally fairly okay with letting you stick stuff around wherever the hell you want it to go. So, yeah, I was kind of, kind of confident in that it was going to, uh, to be happy in uh, in letting me do all of that. Of course, unfortunately, we won't be able to have sort of big old sponsor uh, logos on our car, but that's just something we're going to have to live with. Now, wings. 
course, we're going to need a mighty wing as a race car, and the V8 supercars do have pretty sizable wings. Uh, ooh, actually, kind of a little bit like the Ford wing. Oh, that's the wrong. Which way is that? Uh, sort of width-wise. Uh, it's kind of a little bit like the Ford wing. It doesn't really come down low enough at the back for that. Uh, that kind of looks like a 90 Super Tora wing uh, <laughs> going on there. What are all of these different? Oh, that's actually not too bad. That's not too... Oh, that's the wrong direction, though. We want to extend, uh, want to extend it kind of widthways. And I'm sure there's rules and regulations on how far the wings can come out. I'm not worrying about those ones, though. Uh, okay, so depending on what angle you get, it will depend on which bits... Uh, it's weird. Uh, <laughs> so, there we go. Something like that. It's probably still a little bit too it's probably a little bit too big but it works I'm, I'm okay with that i'm okay with that it kind of does look the part without going for something too ludicrous such as well that one uh, actually that's <laughs> I, I tell a lie too ludicrous that actually does quite look like the ford oh, the ford wings i think if i remember because right. the other fords i think had a strange straight yeah that does actually look quite a lot like that yeah you know what we're gonna go for this one i thought this was gonna look really dumb and it actually kind of works how I want it to. <laughs> oddly enough, oddly enough, that looks more the part than anything else I've done. Fantastic news. Right, tail lights. Now, we've kind of got like a nice little gap. Shall we go? Are these going to fit where I want them to? Uh, it looks like they might, actually, if we can just kind of squeeze them into that sort of gap along there. That just seems like a perfect place to fit a... Brake light. Oh, that goes kind of a little around the corner. I don't really want to go around the corner so much. Uh, maybe sort of like that. Uh, it's not quite smoothly sitting in that gap, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Oh, also, while I think about it, I was having a little play around um, with these bits and pieces. So, the uh, the lips. These have actually now started kind of working a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> I'm making a robot out of robot wars. Yeah, I've kind of got. I've kind of started figuring out how these bits work. Uh, this one here, apparently, not so much on the front of this car, but we can kind of get uh, sort of these. We can kind of have like a splitter effect going on at the front of the car, and I really quite like that. I really quite like that indeed. Can we get it just wide enough to sneak around that corner? There we go. Look at that. Now <laughs> it looks much better at the front. Much much better at the front. Sort of a much more sort of natural finish to the uh, to the front bumper and more more race car-y look to it, which I'm pleased with. Kind of looks a bit like a jag at the front actually. <laughs> right, uh, we have got uh, we've got this like with the back of the car, and shall we just uh, you know we'll just give it a, a big old kind of uh, vent down there, and that will probably be that. I don't really need to do much more to the back of it it's looking good right door handles time we're a race car so we want something fairly uh fairly aerodynamic i guess something along the lines of this uh so we'll stick that in there and we'll stick oh, uh, yes and then we'll stick another one back here i think the rear door i mean the, the the doors on the cars are just essentially skins over certainly at the back i think they're just sort of skins over a metal frame i don't know if they actually function as doors to the to to where the back seats would be but never mind we will need some fuel that'll be an important thing uh as a yeah v8 supercars do still indeed have a refueling wheels oh what wheels do they run i would imagine there's something they run a stock wheel i believe Imagine it'd be something like, well, this one, probably. That's good enough for me. Cool, right. And then badges, of course. This will be a, a Fail Race Industries car. This will be a car that Fail Race Industries are proud to uh, put their name on. I think it's this logo we use. <laughs> we shall stand a chance, maybe, in the uh, Virgin Australia supercars. We'll have, we'll have the power. Whether we're going to have the handling or not is anybody's guess. Uh, no need for number plates, of course. This thing, not going to be a road car. And then I believe that is everything that we will need on here. Yeah, pretty, pretty happy with the car so far. <laughs> pretty happy indeed. Okay, drive type. Longitudinal rear-wheel drive is indeed what we are. Come on, there we go. Figure yourself out. Thank you. I think that just goes and messes with my... I actually quite like it. I like this version of the headlights a lot more than the ones I had on it, so I'm okay with that. I think when I mess around with that, it actually changes some of my fitments. 
but that looks considerably better, so I'm cool with that. Right, sequential gearbox, I believe, would be... They're not flappy paddles in the in the V8 supercars. I think it's just like a push forward to go up. So yeah, pretty sure it's a sequential gearbox. Pretty sure they're six gears. Uh, top speed, it reckons it'll top out about 200 miles an hour, which, depending on the gearing, of course, depending on what circuit they're going around, probably about accurate, actually. Uh, spacing, we'll worry about that at the moment. Uh, differentials... I think they have a spool, I seem to remember reading somewhere, but there's not really that option, so I'm going to just go for the best tech option, which would be the uh, well, sportiness and drivability is what we're going to want. So, I guess electric LSD? Um, I probably... Um, I don't know if there'd be electric. I, yeah, I, I don't know on that one. We're just, we're just guessing work with some, <laughs> some of these bits and pieces because, yeah, the diffs that they're probably running are slightly different to the ones that... Uh, that we'll have options in this game. Tires, I mean, they'd be on full racing tires. We don't do that option yet because we can't build a specific race series car on here. Instead, we are building technically a road car, but never mind. Right, the tire uh, width. I do not know the tire width. I do know that the wheels are 18 uh, inch rims. They are alloy wheels. Uh, so I'm going to, I mean, 285 and 255 seems pretty sensible to me. You know, that doesn't seem out of the realms of possibility in terms of the other car's tyres. In fact, we might even get away with slightly uh, bigger rear tyres. Yeah, maybe 295s at the back. That works for me. Um, now, we move on to brakes. So, vented discs all round. They are six piston discs at the front. They are four piston discs at the rear. They are three... Ooh! They are, in real life, 395 at the back. They are 355... Uh, sorry, at the front. 355... At the back, I can't physically fit those brakes in. I think if we got to 19 wheels, then we would have, then we could get the brakes that would be allowed. Okay, we can't quite get. Uh, I wonder if. Ooh, new idea, new idea. What if we were to whack up the uh, quality uh, <laughs> on that? Let's say 10. Would, and then that, put that back to 18. Would that then allow us. No, it still doesn't allow us to fit bigger wheels um right okay we'll, we'll stick with 19 because i want to get the right brake size uh, <laughs> so they just kind of squeeze the brakes in. i imagine they'll be on you know they're race brakes they're gonna be on full um race pads on there not gonna be good for for drivability it's not gonna be easy to drive this thing but i'm fine with that uh under tray i guess they have a downforce one they don't have active aero bits you want lots of cooling to those brakes because they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna need the damn cooling no seats back there for you um I mean, technically only one seat, but I don't think we can have, like, one driver's seat. Well, we can have one in the middle. I don't think they're allowed that, so I guess we'll go for two. Uh, interior, well, nothing. It's stripped out. Definitely no entertainment. And then we go... Uh, they have power steering? I don't know what sort of power steering they have. Um... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would imagine hydraulic rather than electric but i don't know in all of that again i'm just going to go for the stats and drivability and sportiness plus is what we're going to go for i know they don't have any assists on the cars safety now they are very safe they're race cars roll cage incredibly incredibly strong but they also don't have things like airbags and collision warning detection systems and whatnot which is probably what you'd get in the advanced uh 10 so I'm going to go none because it wouldn't it wouldn't have the conventional safety stuff. Okay, and it's a it's lighter. Oh god, I don't know any of this stuff now. <laughs> it's not active stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to go with standard because that's the sportiest of the standard. I know it's it's not going to be active um suspension. I, now, does it does adaptive mean tunable? I'm going to take adaptive to mean tunable. So tunable dampers sound good to me. Um, would I mean, roll bars again? I mean, they they, they are adjustable. Nah, I'm, I'm just guesswork. I'm just guesswork. Like this, this the fine details are just not something that you can quite uh, quite do. So. It puts the car in at around about a hypercar. Interestingly, <laughs> interestingly, 
Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a full-on race car at the end of the day. So 680 horsepower at 7,500 RPM meets all of the requirements, except for the weight. Actually, this is underweight slightly. It should be... 1,410 kilos, and this is actually coming out 1,351. I wonder if we just go. So if we go interior and we go put it in sport interior, that will then... Oh, that's not even heavy enough to do that. Um, okay. Now, again, realistically speaking, what you could do, is, or what you would do is add ballast and so on. Uh, so if we go advanced, has that got us over? Uh, that's a, so that's a little bit too much. We can shave a bit of weight off of all of that. Uh, we want to go, ooh, uh, safety. So this is oh, so this is all that. So if we go down to standard 10s, there we go. It is over the minimum. Uh, minimum. Actually, tell a lie, thinking about uh, thinking about it, yeah, that, that weight is car and driver. So the car being under that weight would probably be good for dr drive a bit of it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean that would get that would, that would give the driver about sixty kilos or so. It seems about accurate, really. It seems it seems pretty good. Seems pretty <laughs> pretty bloody good, actually. Right, shall we go and send this car around at, around the test track, around the Top Gear circuit? Now, a V8 supercar has never gone around the Top Gear track. I have no idea what sort of time we would expect. Sounds glorious. That much is for sure. 204 miles an hour, it tops out at 0.64.4 seconds. They are looking like pretty good figures. Pretty accurate in many ways to what you would expect one of the one of the real cars to be doing. Our speed up time for this lap. What are we going to get around here? A 116.2. Considering it's not on racing slicks, it would be on road legal tyres here. A 16.2 is very fast around <laughs> Top Gear. I think that's... Ooh, I'm trying to remember the, the cars, the leaderboards. I know things like the Maserati... Is it Maserati MC12? It's like 121.19, so we're three seconds faster than that. We're, we're around modern supercars, su road-going supercar levels of, of performance there, so... I would say, in terms of the performance, that is pretty there. That is pretty there indeed. At uh, all, <laughs> um, it spins the wheels a lot. But the V8 supercar would, at the end of the day, it would be very difficult for a normal person to drive. Like drivability, yeah, would be terrible on a car like that because it's supposed to, you know, it's a, it's a <laughs> 600 horsepower rear wheel drive monster with no help. I bet. I bet I could easily make this a very friendly supercar, like a very friendly super saloon. All you had to do, all I would have to do is go, da -da -da -da, uh, driver raise, there we go. You know, stick on all of this and suddenly, oh look, everybody's happy with it. You know, you stick that on and then suddenly, ah, all the wheel spin fades away. It doesn't go mad, but, you know, it fades it away and and so on. Not that, uh, <laughs> I'm not being, considering it is, there's quite a lot of penalties for being barely drivable uh within the hypercar category it's very good uh, also the other interesting thing just having a think about the fuel situation uh with the way that i've got to set this up if we go back to engine will it let me then so we can go put this on oh yes yeah, stacks of stacks of compression we could put it on regular fuel so run a regular fuel it run absolutely bloody fine and then we can go and sell the car whoopsie sorry sell the car in arcana Hey, <laughs> and then we've made a true hypercar. <laughs> uh, Arcana Ar Ar would would love the opportunity at a road legal, um, road legal V8 supercar. Uh, some reason convertible. I think convertible super. The body type penalty is not quite working properly on. But yeah, supercar, hypercar. There we go. This would be the Fowl Race Industries entry into the uh, the Virgin Australia supercars. I think. Perhaps one of my best looking cars. I think one of my best looking cars. It sounds glorious. It meets pretty much all of the requirements. I think my most successful build on automation yet. I think my most successful build indeed. I'm, I, I have a feeling I've done something slightly weird with the engine. Um, but that might just be trying to work around the rules that I have in, that, that were in place, you know, with the compression and so on. The, the fuel thing seems a little bit odd to me. I've probably built something up somewhere, but the numbers are all adding up to something quite decent. 
something quite decent indeed. Oh, also, before we do go, I was about to finish. I just want to see... Uh, uh, where is it it does the miles per gallon? Is that under the test track? I've completely lost where it tells... Ah, 13 miles a gallon for a full-on race car. I don't know what the actual things would be doing at... It might not be the best fuel economy on the grid, but it's also, you know, better than three or four miles a gallon. It's, it's something. Anyway, that is uh, going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.